Good afternoon. Welcome to We Believe Digital Studios in downtown Jackson, Mississippi. My name is Chris Young. We welcome you into this news break show today. Uh, news break show is just one of many, many uh, offerings that we have on We Believe Digital. And uh, news break is Wednesdays and Fridays from 12 noon to 1230. Uh, we do have a call in line, 1 800 492 5186. We'd love to have you join us there or meet up with us in the chat. And, uh, you know, if you like the programming here at We Believe Digital, click the click the like button, subscribe to our our platform, and and share share with your friends. If you're able to donate, that's a that's a wonderful thing. Uh, any donations go to deferring the the cost of operating the studio, not to any of the podcasters. And we're available on WeBelieveDigital.com, on Facebook, and on YouTube. But we'd especially uh, like you to be able to view us on YouTube, if at all possible, um, because we can, uh, we're, we're aiming for certain goals on there. We've got uh, over 500 subscribers. Uh, we're looking for 600 by the end of this month, and I hope you can help us to meet that uh, goal. So uh, watch us on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube uh, to the We Believe channel, and help us meet our, our, next, uh, our next goal of 600 subscribers. So today for news break, we start out on the on the local level. Things going on in in Jackson and Hines County, uh, and we and at the top of the list, a little bit selfishly here because they closed my Waffle House. So uh, Waffle House on Northside Drive is closed. Uh, the uh, they say what would normally be a busy parking lot filled with hungry people. Uh, you know, remains empty both inside and out. Uh, they closed on yesterday. The business owner decided to close this location for good. Uh, and they say uh, they really don't give a reason why. Of course, we know that it can be a dicey kind of area up there. Uh, there has been some uh, problems, crime-related stuff, but uh, we we don't know for sure what the reasons are, and the and the owner uh, is not saying. But uh, WLBT says customer after customer walked up and pulling on a locked door, approaching a sign on the door, telling them the location will be permanently closing to consolidate sales and people so sad to see that go I went there to that location more than any other Waffle House and I'll, I'll miss going there also on uh, on yesterday a special Hines County Circuit judge has dismissed an election challenge from District 2 supervisor David Archie now you remember when we had the the um, primary elections and certainly the numbers indicated that Mr. Archie had lost by a margin of about two to one by about 1,600 uh, uh, votes, uh, if, I, if I recall uh, properly. And, and, uh, and, and he, uh, uh, you know, alleged there was foul play involved. There was uh, technology involved in, um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a malicious way or something along those lines. But on Tuesday, Judge Barry Ford dismissed his complaint against the Hines County Democratic Executive Committee with prejudice. Means that he can't bring that up again. The reason was that the suit was not filed within the 10 days as required, you know, by the statute. And uh, Archie maintains he was unable to file because of the deadline, because the courts were closed following the, the county cyber attack, which we all know about. Uh, the, the chairperson uh, of the election commission, Jacqueline Amos, who contended there was no irregularities, was pleased with the court's decision. She said, and I quote, and this comes from WLBT, fair and honest elections are essential to our democracy. The unpaid volunteers who serve on the Hines County Democratic Executive Committee conduct our primary elections as a civic duty. We take that duty seriously and we do our duty with integrity, she said. Anyone Anyone who says otherwise speaks from ignorance, malice, or both. Mm. The facts are indisputably clear, and no amount of infantile histrionics from the failed candidate can change that the fact that the people of Hines County have clearly had quite enough of David Archie. Boy, oh boy. 
So, uh, so, so that being said, uh, Anthony uh, Tony Smith is surely uh, going to be moving into that seat. Mr. Archie will be moving out at the end of the year, and Anthony Tony Smith uh, moving in. There's also a petition uh, 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 by uh, Vern Gavin in District 4. Uh, I saw something a few days ago about um, uh, him believing that the um, the person that uh, beat him out, uh, Wanda Evers, uh, has two different residences, and one is not in uh, in Hines County, I, I believe is what uh, he was alleging. So I, I, I'm not sure how that's all gonna pan out, but as soon as we hear about it, we shall let you know. Next story on the local level has to do with the water. When Ted Hennepin was appointed last year, it's safe to say the majority, this from JTV, the majority of Jacksonians just wanted to see the water issues get fixed and hear, hear. Almost a year and hundreds of millions of dollars later, some community members are demanding they be kept in the loop. So uh, all we're asking is to be brought into the process and keep abreast of what is happening in real time, said Brooke Floyd with the People's Advocacy Institute. Monday, community levels uh, members like Floyd and organizations in Jackson filed a motion to intervene in a federal lawsuit from November 2022. The lawsuit was filed by the Department of Justice on behalf of the Environmental Protection Agency before being handed to the city of Jackson. The suit stated the city was in direct violation of the Federal Safe Drinking Water Act, which led to District Henry Wingate putting interim third party manager Hennepin in charge. Uh, so uh, another Danielle Holmes uh, with repairs of the breach and Jackson Undivided uh, says we the community have lost trust and are being told that brown drinking water black drinking water is safe to consume we feel like our lives are on the chopping block here in the city of Jackson so it's not the first time people have voiced concerns about transparency with the water in their pipes and also the contracting. Uh, there were signs early on in the process that the third party administrator uh, would be, um, you know, welcoming uh, uh, services from black contractors here in our black city. In fact, he had an open house over at Smith Robertson Museum that I attended and, and um, got a great turnout of people. So it's seemed like some effort was being put up front but as time goes on it appears the vast majority of the contracts are going to white firms and many of them out of the state and so uh, that's a concern to the people also I think it's uh, two to three million dollars out of some ungodly millions of dollars have gone to black contractors uh, a very small percentage overall so we'll keep you posted on that as we go along so we're moving off into the uh, broader state of Mississippi now. Uh, and always remind you that today is just another day when the uh, Republican legislators, uh, the leaders, you know, they have a trifecta of leadership. Uh, the, the head of the Senate, the head of the, the House, the governor's office, uh, you know, it's just... Um, It's, it's, a, it's a stronghold on what goes on and what doesn't go on in, in our state. And none of these Republican legislators, uh, all of them white people, uh, all of them, you know, conservatives and all, not one of them has, has uh, asked to hold a hearing on the TANF scandal where upwards of $100 million is pilfered uh, from these TANF accounts that are, that are uh, sent to us from the federal government, multi-millions, tens of millions. 90 million a year uh, as a safety net for the poorest Mississippians and, and we are the poorest state in the nation and and these people uh, pilfered that money away uh, reduced uh, direct cash benefits to people uh, used it for pet projects just a pathetic um, 
you know, uh, use of, uh, of funds. Just It's theft. It's fraud. It's theft. And, uh, you know, they want to let the legal system answer it. They don't feel a responsibility to actually have hearings themselves. Because, you know, if you bring something out of the darkness into the light of day, chances are there's going to be a whole lot more people that were involved in pulling those levers uh, than we know about right now. So they're staying quiet. They're staying in the dark. And we know what the Lord has to say about all that. Next story. Significant expansion of voting rights in Mississippi was put in doubt yesterday when a federal appeals court said it will reconsider an earlier decision to allow people convicted of certain felonies to cast ballots. You know, we were so uh, heartened by that ruling. And, and uh, you know, you pay the, pay the penalty for the crime that was committed, but yet you still don't get to vote. The most fundamental right of every American. So you go do the time in parchment and, you know, um, uh, parchment, you know, sanctioned over and over by the Department of Justice for deplorable conditions, inability to keep people safe, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and um, we were so heartened by that earlier, earlier decision. But now, uh, <laughs> lo and behold, uh, you'd be shocked that the state attorney general, conservative Republican uh, white attorney general, Lynn Fitch, had, has, had asked for the review. So now the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals said Thursday it's filing that a majority of the appeals court, 16 active judges, would take a new look at the two to one decision that had been delivered by a panel on August 4th. You know, they let the, a small group work on a certain issue, but since it was two to one and uh, Lynn Fitch is Lynn Fitch, and uh, they don't they don't want <laughs> they don't want the majority uh, of these um, you know of these uh, convicted felons who have served their time, paid their price. They don't want them to get their voting rights back because uh, why? Gee, I, I wonder why that is. I wonder what percentage of those uh, felons that get their rights back would vote on the Democratic ticket. So you see, there's always a method to their madness. And, um, you know, um, you, you do the time, but in Mississippi, uh-uh, that's just not enough. We're going to make you pay for the rest of your life, taking away the most fundamental right that we have here in America. We're getting closer to the Mississippi State Fair. Now, that ought to be a big deal for a lot of people. You know, that's right here in Jackson. Starts up on October 5th, the 5th through the 15th. Um, the, this year, the Mississippi Commissioner of Agriculture and Commerce, Andy Gibson, Mr. Genuine Mississippi himself, cowboy hat wearing, Commissioner of Agriculture. I'm sure he cares deeply about all Mississippians. Um, he announced that fairgoers will experience a taste of the Dixie National Rodeo. And don't we love to hear that word Dixie? What does that conjure up in your mind? The daily taste of the Dixie National sh uh, shows will run throughout the duration of the fair. Will include uh, uh, bull riding, calf scrambles, bucking bronx, live entertainment, and rodeo clowns. And don't forget to don't forget to avail yourself to that uh, biscuit tent. Apparently, uh, uh, that's a big thing, you know, that biscuit tent. And don't forget the pig races, because you know that's a good time also. So special guest Forey J. Smith, who is known for his role on um, on Yellowstone, will make an appearance at the Taste of the Dixie National Rodeo uh, to meet and greet fans October 7th and 8th. So how about that? So who's performing at the Mississippi State Fair? Oh my gosh, a long list of performers coming to the Mississippi State Fair. But you know, this is Mississippi. So if you're looking for black performers, uh, you only need to go over there about three different days out of the two weeks because um, because uh, the uh, the white uh, performers at the Mississippi State Fair outnumber the black performers by about three to three and a half to one. And that's uh, that's Mississippi. <laughs> and this year we got uh, 
uh, added security features to address. So let me just run through this list with you. Um, well, actually, let me pick that up as soon as we get back from break. Running up against a break now. You want to know these rules and regulations ahead of time in the event that you want to go over there and support the state fair. We'll be right back with you. Hey, have you heard about the Accountable Card? It's more than a card. It's a complete mobile banking service that's accountable to all of us. You'll get a no credit check debit card good anywhere Visa is accepted to make purchases, deposits, even get or transfer cash with an FDIC insured bank account managed from our smartphone app. There's even a pre-approved no interest line of credit if you need emergency cash. So why go to the bank when you can have ours in your pocket? Get accountable. Just download our app today. Are you dreaming of becoming an entrepreneur, but you're not sure where or how to start? At Entrepreneurs Academy 101, our online program will guide you step-by-step -step on how to start and grow your own business. We offer courses such as how to write a business plan, how to create a budget, and so much more. Our online training program is designed for you to learn at your own pace, and there's no set order to complete this program. Because our academy is online, you have the choice to learn with a group, with friends, or individually. Upon completion of the entire curriculum, you will receive a certificate of achievement to acknowledge that you have completed the training needed to become a successful entrepreneur. So enroll today to design the life that you love. Contact your entrepreneur coach, Brenda Myers, at 601-672-0695 or visit our website at www.entrepreneursacademy101.com for more information. Back to We Believe Digital Studios, our weekly news break program. Uh, up to 86 degrees here in Jackson today, heading for 91. Clear skies. We're still hurting badly for rain. So if you know any uh, unique, uh, well-tested rain dance or something along those lines, be sure to let us know. We want to get the word out to people so we can get some rain around here uh, for a whole bunch of different uh, reasons. Uh, back to the Mississippi State Fair starting October 5th. They've expanded and made improvements to the parking lots. They've added an additional 850 parking spaces uh, and they installed new lighting and cameras around the fairgrounds, according to uh, Andy Gibson. Uh, the security policies are this for the fair. Beginning at 9 p.m., any guest under the age of 18 seeking admission to the fairgrounds must be accompanied by a legal adult 21 or over. Any guest may be asked to show official proof of age to be admitted after 9 p.m. When entering the midway, all guests proceed through one of the several uh, entry security points utilizing a metal detector and will be subject to wanding. All bags subject to search. They're saying that a maximum bag size is 12 by 12 by 6. So uh, no outside food or beverage allowed, no marketing, soliciting, vending, uh, unless you've had an application approved for that. No animals other than uh, service animals are allowed. And pursuant to state law, the legal the legal carry of firearms um, by all lawful adults is recognized on the state fairgrounds. So if you got if you got the, the permit to have that gun, I guess uh, yeah, yeah. Exceptions and challenges to these policies will be satisfied at the discretion of fair management. <laughs> I get a kick out of that fair management. So um, moving on to the national level, uh, last night, U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein passed away in her Washington office. She's been, uh, uh, she was elected to the Senate in, in, in 1992, so 31 years ago. Um, year uh, year of the woman broke gender barriers through her long career local national politics she started out as on the board of supervisors in san francisco and just kind of went up from there uh cared about uh, a lot about women's causes uh she was 90 years old um 
President Joe Biden, a fellow Democrat, called Feinstein, quote, a pioneering American, a true trailblazer, and a cherished friend uh, for him and First Lady Jill Biden. So farewell, Diane Feinstein. With, with little time left to prevent the government uh, shutdown, the House is in a, a familiar position. So effectively paralyzed as conservatives feud with Speaker Kevin McCarthy over matters large and small. This is per the Associated Press. McCarthy has pushed the Republican conference to embrace short-term funding plan that would include sweeping Republican proposal for the southern border, but a small group of hardline conservatives have defied the speaker in a quest to get rid of stopgap funding plans known as CRs or continuing resolutions, even if opposing them means forcing a government shutdown. So this is supposed to happen Saturday at midnight. So it's 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 left uh, McCarthy at an impasse. The California congressman will likely be left with the political damage of a shutdown unless he turns to Democrats for help in passing a bipartisan bill. But working with Democrats would give hardline Republicans more reason to remove McCarthy as speaker. So we'll see what transpires today. And I assume they'll be there tomorrow, but you never know. They like their weekends. So um, so we'll have to see about that. Also, from the, from the massive state of California, a new law to raise the minimum wage for fast food workers to $20 per hour next year. An acknowledgement from the state's Democratic leaders that most of the often overlooked workforce are the primary earners for their low-income households. It's set to take effect on April 1st. Fast food workers in California will have the highest guaranteed base salary in the industry. The state's minimum wage for all other workers is $15.50. So an extra four fifty an hour for uh, fast food workers, uh, and, and that uh, regular uh, minimum wage for all other workers, fifteen dollars and fifty cents, is uh, more than double of the minimum wage here in Mississippi. So Mississippi's never established a, a minimum wage; they just go by what the feds hold. So that's seven twenty-five. So California is already the highest in the United States. Got a story about a, an older old lady here, older lady here with the uh, with with student loan debts and and something that's transpired from the Biden administration. Uh, Corinne uh, Eggstrom thought she'd be paying off her federal student loans for the rest of her life. The 82 year old was shocked when she logged on to check her balance ahead of payments resuming in October and found that more than 175 thousand in debt had been erased. She's one of eight. 804,000 people, borrowers who will have a total of 39 billion forgiven under a one-time adjustment granted by the Biden administration. It's for people in income-driven repayment plans who've been paying back loans for 20 or 25 years, but who never received credit for late or partial payments. He also credits borrowers for periods before the pandemic when they were allowed to pause or reduce payments due to financial hardship. Uh, to correct mistakes uh, by loan services, Department of Education is retroactively adjusting these accounts, resulting in forgiveness. The department says 95% of those who qualify have now been informed of the cancellation. So that's uh, great news for a lot of those people that have been uh, paying and trying to pay for years and years and years, and uh, they're going to get a relief, despite what the Supreme Court had said. Uh, the Supreme Court agreed uh, this morning to decide whether state laws that seek to regulate Facebook, TikTok, uh, X, and other social media platforms violate the Constitution. The justices will review laws enacted by Republican-dominated legislators and signed by Republican governors in Florida and in Texas. While the details vary, both laws aim to prevent the social media companies from censoring users based on their viewpoints. The court's announcement three days before the start of the new term comes as the justices continue to grapple with how laws written at the dawn of the digital age or earlier apply to today's online world. So that will be very interesting how all that uh, pans out. 
United Auto Workers Union says its two-week strike against Detroit automakers will spread to 7,000 more workers at the Ford plant in Chicago and General Motors Assembly Factory near Lansing, Michigan. Union President Sean Fain told workers on a video appearance Friday, that's today, that um, negotiations haven't broken down, but Ford and GM have refused to make meaningful progress. Jeep, the, the maker of Jeep is a company called Stellantis, was sparred from the third round of strikes because they made some adjustments. They were able to uh, negotiate successfully with them. The GM plant in Delta Township near Lansing makes large crossover SUVs like the Traverse and Buick Enclave. A nearby metal parts stamping plant will uh, remain open, Fain said. The Chicago Ford plant makes the, the Ford Explorer and Explorer Police Interceptors, as well as the Lincoln Aviator SUV. The Explorer Interceptor is the nation's top-selling police vehicle, but they're going to they're going to go on strike there so um apparently the apparently the uh, uh auto workers are not uh, are not are not uh, playing you know they're really serious about these changes you know they took it in the chin uh previously and 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 were and were bailed out by the federal government the car companies were bailed out and now they're making you know multi multi millions billions of dollars paying their executives 20 million dollars a year in one in one case my and 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 not not being willing to contribute to you know pension plans improving minimum wage uh improving working conditions etc cetera, etc cetera. and the last thing on the on the um on the national side, before we move on to the uh, more global news, a Tennessee judge said Friday she's ending a conservatorship uh, between former NFL player Michael Orr and a Memphis couple who took him in when he was in high school. He, he was at the very end of high school. Uh, Shelby County Probate Court Judge Kathleen Gomes said she is terminating the agreement reached in 2004 that allowed Sean and Leanne Tui to control Oher, Oher's finances. Oher signed the agreement when he was 18 and living with the couple as he was being recruited by colleges as a star football player you know this is uh this is the young man that the the movie the blind side uh was patterned after Gomes, again, the judge, says she was not dismissing the case. Ower has asked that the Tuies provided a financial uh, accounting of money that may have come from them as part of the agreement, claiming that they used his name, image, and likeness to enrich themselves and lied to him that the agreement meant the Tuies were adopting him. They never adopted him, but boy, it sure, it sure looked like that, didn't it? Gomes said she was disturbed that such an agreement was ever reached. So the judge saying, uh, a female judge saying that she's disturbed that agreement like that was ever reached. She said she had never seen in her 43-year career a conservatorship agreement reached with someone who was not disabled. I cannot believe it got done, she said. Ower and the Tuies listened in by video conference but did not speak. So, um, some heartening news there for Michael Ower. It, it, it certainly looks like, uh, uh, you know, certainly there was must have been benefit to that agreement at the time, but it seemed like uh, uh, lots of the money uh, uh, that was derived from that conservatorship went to the the Tui family. Not only the parents, but the kids were given shares. Why were the kids given shares of that money? I, you know, so these are white people, and and this is uh, and 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 Michael Ower is a black man, and uh, he played played in the NFL. I want to say six years. Tremendous football player. Just stuff you hear, you just hate hearing that. But hopefully they're gonna they're gonna uh, un unring that bell and do something good about it. 
So on the global news, the Philippines president, uh, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., uh, has spoken publicly against China's installation of this 300-meter uh, long barrier at the entrance to Scarborough Shoal, uh, which was dismantled at his order. So, you know, China trying to, you know, own the, own the South China Sea and claim, you know, different parts, building these atolls, putting these barriers in place that they can ben, then build on and make infrastructure for themselves. But uh, Taiwan is not big on this and, uh, and uh, the Philippines are not big on this either. So Marco says we're not looking for trouble, but, we'll, but what we'll do is to continue defending the maritime territory of the Philippines and the rights of our fishermen who've been fishing in those areas for hundreds of years. So how about that? This is a quirky story. A hundred people, a hundred people killed and 150 others injured at a fire. And this was about five or six days ago at a wedding reception in the district of Hamdania in Iraq's northern province, attracting global messages of symphony. Survivors said the fire swept through the hall in a matter of seconds, was triggered by fireworks that had been set set off inside the building uh, before the bride and groom's slow dance. Uh, Kurdish News aired footage showing the fireworks being lit indoors and shot up and set a chandelier on fire. And the last thing, scientists have made a key discovery about antimatter. Well, antimatter, a mysterious substance which was plentiful when the universe began. Antimatter is the opposite of matter from which stars and planets are made. Both are created in equal amounts in the Big Bang, which formed our universe. While matter is everywhere, though, its opposite is now fiendishly hard to find. The, st the latest study that has discovered the two respond to gravity in the same way, matter and antimatter. For years, physicists have been sc scrambling to discover the differences and similarities. Discovering that anti antimatter rose in response to gravity instead of falling would have blown apart what we know about physics. So more and more gets learned in the science realm as we go along. Thank you for joining us for today's show. Hope you have a super weekend. We'll be back with you uh, for more, uh, we believe, digital programming uh, later on today. And then, of course, news break. We'll be back with you next Wednesday at 12 noon. Have a great weekend. Looking for the hottest content in the city of Jackson and surrounding areas? Check out WeBelieveDigital.com. Also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. We Believe Digital Podcast is here for all your podcasting needs. 